class, welcome back to this course. I'm teacher Anita. Funny word play. Unit 2 Translating Chinese Poetry and Festivals. 2.4 Chongyang Festival, Winter Solstice Festival, and Tomb Sweeping Day. Hi, I'm Teacher Anita. Chongyang Festival or Double Nice Festival. Chongyang Festival. Chinese people celebrate Chongyang Festival on the ninth day of the ninth month of the lunar calendar. Chongyang Festival is also known as Double Nights Festival. Chinese people go mountain climbing on Double Nights Festival. Traditionally, during Chongyang Festival, people wear dogwood leaves and drink chrysanthemum wine in order to avoid evil spirits and have longevity. Guangzhong Yu and Double Nice Festival. As a famous Taiwanese poet, Guangzhong Yu was born on the ninth day of the ninth month of the lunar calendar in 1928. For this reason, Guangzhong Yu calls himself the son of Dogwood. Dogwood is a symbol of Double Nice Festival. Autumn Harvest. This poem was written by Guangzhong Yu. Qiu Xing, Autumn Harvest. Bai Lu is used as the cover, frost as the fly leaf. Autumn is a mature collection of points. While flipping, it is full of the scent of melons and fruits. There is a full moon on the night of mid-autumn festival, while Chongyang is full of chrysanthemums. Bai Lu or White Yu is the 15th solar turn in the 24 solar turns. This is a translation assignment for you. You have to translate the last five lines of the poem, Autumn Harvest, into English. Take a look at the Chinese point. Dongzhi, winter solstice. Winter solstice. Chinese people celebrate winter solstice on the fifth day of the 11 months of the lunar calendar. The winter solstice marks the first day of winter and it has the shortest daytime and the longest night of the year. Literally, the winter solstice festival gives people a break at the beginning of winter. 
During winter solstice, Chinese people eat glutinous rice balls. You can take a look at the photo on the right. The origin of winter solstice. The winter solstice is the most important one of the 24 solar turns. Its origin has a direct association with the lunar calendar. In the book Shang Shu, the winter solstice is termed a short day, because according to Yao Dian, on this day the sun strictly shines on the Tropic of Capricorn, and the Northern Hemisphere has the shortest night and the longest daytime period. This poem, Winter Solstice, was written by Guang Zhongyu. Winter Solstice I have thought for a long time and I cannot decide how to make the most chic Christmas card for you. Until the winter solstice day, I said, Right, then along the lace of the ocean spray, I cut a wide sea view of Shizuan Bay. The front side is the shortest date time of the year. At the bottom of the magnificent view, is a red sunset. The night is the longest night of the year. On the left is the Chinese poem. On the right is the English translation of the poem. Now, this is a translation assignment for you. You have to translate the second half of the second stanza of the poem. Winter Solstice into English. Take a look at the point in Chinese. Qingming Festival or Tomb Sweeping Day Tomb Sweeping Day Qingming Festival is also known as the Tomb Sweeping Day. Tomb Sweeping Day is observed as holiday in Taiwan. Taiwanese people celebrate Qingming Festival on the 20th of the second month of the lunar calendar. Qingming Festival is the fifth solar turn of the lunar calendar. The origin of Qingming Festival Qingming Festival originated from the Cold Food Festival, which was established by Chong'er during the Warring States period. This festival was established to commemorate 
Chongers, Chancellor, Jie Zhitui, who had loyally followed him during his exile. Jie Zhitui even cut meat from his own thigh to provide Chong'e with soup. The Origin of Qingming Festival When Chong'e was enthroned as the Duke Wen of Jing, Jie Zhitui resigned and moved to a forest with his mother. Duke Wen could not find Jie Zhitui, so he ordered his soldiers to set fire to the forest in order to force Jie Zhitui to come out. However, Jie and his mother were killed in the fire, and the duke was filled with remorse. The Origin of Tomb Sweeping Festival Tomb Sweeping Festival is associated with a legend in which Han Emperor Liu Bang looked for his parents' tomb after he defeated West Chu tyrant Xiang Yu. When he returned to his hometown, he could not find the grave of his parents. All the graves had been covered with weeds for successive years of war. The Origin of Tomb Sweeping Festival Liu Bang took out a piece of paper from his sleeves and tore it into small pieces. He then prayed to God. I will throw these small pieces of paper into the air. And if the paper falls and stays in one place, it is my father and mother's grave. Liu Bang threw these pieces of paper into the air, and then a piece of paper fell on a grave. Liu Bang looked at the vague tombstone and found his parents' names engraved on the tombstone. This poem is Qingming Festival. It was written by a famous poet in Tang Dynasty. He is Du Mu, and this point is the most iconic point for this special festival, which is Qingming Festival, because it describes the situation and what happens in Qingming Festival. Qingming Festival It is always raining during Qingming Festival. And pedestrians on the road are melancholy and soulless. I ask where a tavern is. A shepherd boy points to a remote apricot village. Idiomatic translation, communicative translation. I apply idiomatic translation to translate certain phrases. For example, 别致 in the poem Winter Solstice. 别致 can be translated to be unique or distinctive in Chinese. But I choose to translate it to be chick because chick is a more modern word, which is closer to young people. In this way, I make an attempt to interpret an old point with a modern touch. Besides, at the beginning of this course, I mentioned the importance of the parts of speech. For example, verbs, nouns, adjectives, etc. Now I'd like to mention the importance of the parts of sentence. For example, subject and object. In the poem, Winter Solstice, some lines 
in the original source language lack the subject. For example, the first line of the poem. It is not possible to omit the subject of this line in target language, which is English. So I add a subject to this line in order to make a complete sentence. The subject is I. I thought for a long time and I can't decide how to make the most cheap Christmas card for you. This translation method can be called communicative translation because I attempt to produce on my readers an effect as close as possible as that obtained on the readers of the original poem. But I add a subject which is omitted from the original poem.